What's up, YouTube? Some more too. I'll take a look at all the updated stuff we have found about water and the universe and what it all might mean. There's quite a bit of information here, and I'm going to read all of it. Just, I'll post all the links, though. So, there's quite a bit of interesting excerpts. Let's see here. Researchers looking for signs of life elsewhere in the universe often start by looking for one key ingredient necessary to complex life as we know it, water. Just uh, in just 750 light years away, they found quite a bit of it, spewing from poles of young stars. Sun-like star that is blasting jets of H2O into interstellar space at 124,000 miles an hour. This discovery is interesting in a number of levels. For one, it indicates that throughout the universe, young protostars could be distributing vast quantities of water, potentially seeding life elsewhere. But it also sheds light on the formation of our own sun and the role that water may have played in the formation of our own planet. So there's quite a bit of information about Water everywhere, supersonic hail, seed star systems, and uh, I've even found stars that are as cold as a, or as hot as a fresh cup of coffee, around about 97 degrees Fahrenheit at its surface. And uh, this is really similar to. We can take a look at some some photographs here. We'll take a look here at what the, what, what's actually happening. The solar wind and corona mass ejections, if you look those up, they are the same thing. Mass is matter, high-charged energy of matter, and that matter is, is water, and it's in an evaporated state. Uh, it, it, it's, let's take a look here at uh, some of this other evidence. Okay, let's go down here. It says, uh, water vanishes only to reappear. Located in the northern constellation of Perseus, the protostar is no more than a 100,000 years old and remains swaddled in a large cloud, gas and dust from which the star was born. Using an infrared instrument, the European Space Agency, researchers are able to peer through the cloud and detect telltale light signatures of hydrogen and oxygen atoms the building blocks of water moving on and around the star after tracing the past of these atoms the team concluded that the water forms on the star where temperatures are a few thousand degrees but once the droplet enters the outer spewing jets of gas 180,000 degrees temperatures blast the water back into a gaseous form once the hot gas hits much cooler surrounding material at about 5,000 times the distance from sun to earth, they de decelerate, creating a shock front where the gas cools down rapidly, condensing and reforming as water again. Okay, we'll look at some photographs that show, you know, that, that it, it, it's, a, it's a zone where water is, is evaporated, where life shows up. And anything with a magnetic field is going to cause that to condense again. So therefore, that's what, you know, this is what's happening. I mean, it's happening all over our planet, you know, right in front of our eyes. You know, we can take a look at the heliosphere of our our, our own heliosphere, the outer Oort cloud and whatnot. And this basic process, same thing's happening here is, is what's happening in the atmosphere of our Earth. You have, you, you know, you, you have water being, you know, turned it evaporate, uh, evaporated or, or used as electrolysis. They're both the same thing. And in this spot where water is uh, in its state, uh, uh, capable of being in all, you know, four states actually, uh, solid, ice, liquid, water, gas, and even the plasma form where we see lightning in our own atmosphere. It also shows up all through the same spot, you know, as above, so below. Not necessarily a perfect mirror, but a, quite a remarkable reflection of one another. This this water comes out, condenses in our Oort cloud, and yes, comets are, you know, a lot of comets are made of water. Not all of them are made of water. There, anything can fly towards that sun is going to have electric discharge, whether it be a planet or an ice ball or whatever you want it to be. 
and the fact that the ones that, that they have studied may actually be in water versus the ones that we've seen that may actually not be water so comets or any object that's flying into our solar system is going to have a tail and a different you know, electrical discharge and the fact that, that this whole area is evaporated moisture than anything that flies through it's going to have you know at an increased accelerated rate going to have a tail so I was hoping that might clear some stuff up. Maybe that'll help everybody see, you know, this whole thing is just pretty, you know, it's over and over and over. It's not really a question of uh, is there life anywhere else. It's, it's, it's almost a given as to how much life there is out there. Here we're showing water on the, the moon and actually find it in the bottom of a crater and uh, and eyes, of course. But, I mean, that, that shows that there's a water table under the surface here and they're going to find the same thing they found on Mars uh, let's see here Mars until now Earth was the only planet known to have vast reservoirs of water in its interior scientists analyzing the water content of two Martian meteors originated from the, inside the red planet they found that the amount of water in places of the Martian mantle was vastly larger than that previously estimated in similar to that of Earth. This result not only affects what we know about the geological history of Mars, but also has implications of how water got to the Martian surface. The data raised the possibility that Mars could have sustained life. So you can read all this too. The fact is water's everywhere. It's in everything. It's what it's made of. Peace and love. Big heads up.